Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Just a review of what we did last time. We looked at how the GetOps command processes our input list. It starts and finds flags and values associated with flags, and when it finds something that's not a flag or not a value associated with a flag, it gets stuck at that point. Now in this example, y is a valid flag, x is a valid flag, and it takes a value. However, the letter a is not a valid flag and it's not going to be a option associated with the x because there is no dash x in front. Therefore, this is the first non-flag, non-value associated with the letter x. So we run this and we can see that our pointer the first time through points to the first location and it says after we run get ops it says our flag is y and then it looks at the next location dash x we run get ops get ops says our flag is x however it knows that the x takes a value associated with it so it gobbles that up too and then it points to this right here the index pointer now points to the letter a and the next time through we run getOps. GetOps says, I don't know what the letter A is. So it gets stuck at that point. No matter how many times we run the getOps after this, it is always going to be stuck at the letter A, as you can see from this example. So we now have a way of seeing where the optional string start and all the flags and values associated with the flags end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at an example where we remove the flags and the values associated with the flags and just leave us with the strings at the end. And this will do it for command line argument learning. So I've updated our script a little bit. All I've said is now that we have optional arguments at the end and the name of the program is procflags5.ksh. Our x flag takes a value, our y flag doesn't. Here are some examples of how you would run it. And as you can see, in some examples, I put arguments at the end. In other ex examples, I didn't. This script goes over how we can read in optional arguments after processing all the flags. I've updated our usage variable so that when a user makes a mistake, they get the correct usage for the program. And of course, I forgot to put in a 5 there. Now, we're still doing the same exact stuff with our while loop and our get ops and our case statement. We're still doing that same concept where if somebody enters a dash x flag, this variable gets set to 1. If somebody enters a dash y flag, this variable gets set to 1. So nothing changes with our get ops nor our case statement. So we still process invalid flags. We still say that x is a valid flag and it takes a value, and that y is a valid flag. If somebody enters a dash x, we set our variable x set to 1, and we read in the value associated with the dash x flag. If somebody enters a y, we set our y set variable to 1. If somebody enters an invalid flag, then we tell them they entered an invalid flag. We print a usage statement, and we exit out because if they made a mistake entering the command in, we don't want to process any further. We also process the fact that if a user forgets to enter a value associated with the dash x, we tell them that the dash x requires a value, we print the correct usage, and we exit out. So absolutely nothing has changed in our while statement or in our case statement. However, once we get to this point, we're done processing flags, so we are now pointed at the beginning of the optional strings, if there are any. So, 
The option index now holds the location of the non-flag entries. Our list of arguments is stored in dollar asterisk and dollar at. It's the whole list. We want to remove the entries related to the flags. Okay, so what I did was I just printed the input list. Now you notice I put a dash capital R in front of this prints, excuse me, in front of the list. That's because what happens is this list gets substituted right here. So without this dash capital R, it might look something like print space dash x5 space dash y. In the print statement, we'll actually think the dash x is a flag associated with the print statement. The only way to make that disassociation is to put a dash capital R in front. That means that if this starts with a flag, like a dash x or a dash y, it's just something I want you to print. It's not a flag associated with the print statement. Okay, now we know that this is now the location of the strings. So in our example, it was four. And we wanted to get rid of the flags and the values associated with the flags, which, was at lo which were the first three locations. Therefore, 4 minus 1 is 3, shift space 3. That's what this will do. We're getting rid of the flags so that our input list will now only contain the optional strings. And then we print the list after we do the shifting and we should be left with only the optional strings. And then just right here, I set a loop counter variable i, and then I said for variable in the list, the dollar asterisk list, just increment the counter, and then just print the counter and the variable. So this will print each string with a counter in front of it, one per line. That's all this is doing. So let's actually run this. So here we have it. This should be a flag, this should be a flag, and this should be a value associated with the flag. These should all be strings. And as you can see, it just says we entered an X, a Y, then we entered an X. And so once we were done evaluating all this stuff, we now print our list. We do our shift, which in this case would be 3 because it's this is 4, so 4 minus 1 is 3. And we're, you can see we're left with just the optional arguments at the end, the non-flag, non-values associated with the flags. And it just printed it out one per line. And when you don't enter any flags, the input list is just strings. After a shift, it's still just the strings, and then we use our for statement to print it out. And one thing I want to show you is that this dash x, because it's after a string, it's going to be considered a string itself. It's no longer a flag. So as you can see, input list is this. After our shift, it's this. And as you can see, the dash x is considered the second string. And one last thing just running it with just flags. And as you can see, our input, you enter the dash Y, the input list is dash Y. After the shift, the input list is nothing. And the for statement shows nothing.